welcome everyone to episode 4. Today we have a massive amount of stuff to get through, including expanding to the east, creating a new residential area in that forest that I was just showing you, as well as new industry, expanding current industry and adding more food uh, income uh, through additional fishing places, creating another church. We've got a lot to get through, but it's the fundamental basis for expanding out of your initial territory. So as you can see at the moment, we've got a forester and we've got deforestation all marked in a single area. And we can see there's a couple of people here coming through the forest who are going to join our village, but let's draw our residential area. So this is gonna be our new residential area. Now the reason I'm doing a donut is a donut is the most efficient shape to use when doing distance from the market. So our market is going to sit in the middle. So we are gonna need a new market. Uh, so let's get that created. Now we wanna see the area that we've just painted. So let's uh, click on that, uh, go to views and go to zoning so that we can see where it is. Go back to our build and then go to our market. Now we're gonna plonk it down in the center and what we'll do is we will build four um, market stalls straight off the bat. So we'll put down four. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate them around the cent central square. Uh, but with enough space to expand around the outer edge. Now the reason for that is obviously we will have uh, goods as well as food as we go forwards. So it's kind of just pre-planning for that. Uh, so that's two, put in number three, rotate it round again so it's all off of that central kind of square. Uh, we may eventually put, I don't know, a statue or something in the middle, who knows. But for now, we're putting in our four market benches. Let's put some decorative items uh, in between each one. Uh, so some benches there, let's put some more. Okay, so rotate that round again. So it's giving people places to sit, but what it is also doing, of course, is defining that central market in our new residential district. So let's get that built. Now, other things that we're gonna probably want to do is build, um, so we'll put a well in, but we're also gonna need another construction hut. Uh, so the workers aren't going to have to travel for miles uh, to actually get uh, to building stuff here. So we will put in this little gap between um, the blue and the green, uh, we'll put in a builder's hut, so builder's workshop, and we'll put that in, so as I said, in this gap here in the middle. And up on the northern edge of the screen there, you will also see those rocky cliff faces. Uh, so within this footage, it was well over an hour of game time. Uh, I do also go and uh, start doing mining as well, but that will be in episode five. So that'll be in the next episode. Uh, we are gonna run to about the half hour uh, for this episode, because there is a lot to get through. Uh, one of the other things we didn't do, of course, was um, edit our um, market so that we can put on the cloth. That's it, the cloth overheads. So we're gonna put uh, on those, so let's go for a red one. And uh, what we'll do is we'll just basically use all four because we've got four market benches. So blue rustic, there we go. A green market tent. And then finally for the last one down at the bottom, the rustic market tent, there we go. So, so it makes it look a little bit nicer. Of course, it also increases our um, prestige. Uh, by having some beautification in the form of the uh, covers for the market stands. So let's get our three builders into that builder's workshop and they should be close enough to warehouses to be able to do stuff. Now what's this? Make sure everyone appreciates their time celebrating the laborers. Okay, yeah, we're quite happy to do that. So make sure the mood at the fair stays high. Okay, so it's gonna last for 21 days and we will get some nice little boosts if we're successful. Uh, so definitely worth doing. The penalty, obviously, if we fail is quite high, but looking up, we're already at 81% happiness, uh, so I don't see it being a problem. What we may also want to do, so we're now hosting that regional fair for the next 21 days, uh, but we're already building a second market that's gonna look very nice once it's built. Uh, so what we can probably do is I will skip forwards now and I will continuously skip forwards over this episode uh, just so that we see the important bits. So the next thing is we're gonna need a church. 
So let's go to our worshipping buildings, so service buildings, build our rustic church. We'll do it down to the river's edge here, so in a nice location that we can obviously expand on later, you know, maybe put like a little graveyard in, that kind of stuff, uh, when we start once tweaking the actual beautification of our town. Uh, but for now, this is just a logically fairly good location uh, to put the church. Again, put in the door, so rotate the camera, put that at the front. I kind of do a generic design for uh, churches, which is whack a tower on, uh, have the main building and add a couple of uh, chapels to the side just to increase uh, the benefits of uh, the number of people that it can have, uh, which then of course also needs to be expanded. So somebody did comment um, on my church and service capacity. Uh, so yes, uh, we do need to also expand the original church just to make sure that everyone can attend service. Uh, but for now, that's looking pretty good. Simple church and get that built. Now, of course, we're also going to need a tax office uh, near this residential area and we'll make it a bit bigger than the one that's in our first residential area uh, so that we can have two uh, tax officers, so two people walking around collecting taxes. Now you can see we've got a minus one for comfort. I'm presuming that's someone who's not able to find a house. Uh, but uh, let's change our bell ringing to daily. Uh, leave it as light, seeing as that's the only option. And let's zoom in and have a look. So we've got 45 out of 45 people in service. Uh, we haven't got a negative debuff yet for service, um, so that's still okay. Uh, we can do a bit more beautification as well. So let's just pop in a signpost. There we go, that'll do. I'm sure a builder will be along in the not too distant future to get that done. Now having a look at our book, uh, we have tavern and we have hedge, but under the common path we have clothing and that is our next unlock. And we also have goods market, but that will be in episode five. Um, so we want to do clothing. Now that unlocks a load of new buildings, sheep farming, and two uh, associated buildings uh, for manufacturing it into clothing. So if we have a quick look, I'm going to uh, accelerate the time here just so that some of the stuff actually starts getting built uh, now that everything is uh, is done for the time being. Obviously we're going to do a lot more expansion on the uh, eastern border including the sheep farm. So sheep farm here, the weaver hut, the tailor's workshop and then also we will build another wheat farm and then we're going to have to mark a huge area for deforestation. Now I'm putting another well in here because I'm not entirely sure uh, whether it's worth having a, a reduced distance for people to travel to get water. Uh, so that's the reason I put a second well into that residential area. Now we've skipped forwards again. Uh, so we want to start uh, expanding. Now just having a look over this side, uh, we have our well and we have some uh, new people. We've got these people here who are all standing jobless, uh, which is fine. Uh, in fact, it says zero. So maybe they're taking a break. Let's just assume they're taking a break. But what we do want is another fisherman. Uh, so at the moment we have 14 fish. We don't have a big excess of fish uh, for our population, which is now at 54. So we do want some extra food capacity. Now I will say that when this second residential area is constructed with the industry as well, supporting it, uh, our population very quickly goes up to 100. Uh, so that does happen quite rat rapidly. We've got another couple of people joined us, we're up to 57 as a population. Again, there's not really any huge reason for people to be building houses uh, in our district here yet, uh, but of course as the market in the world gets built, and we've delighted our visitors. So that uh, 21 day thing has now finished. We've got a uh, happiness boost. So we're at 97% happiness. Uh, that's very good. Uh, actually, we've still got eight days to go. So we're just doing very, very well uh, with the regional fair. So clearly we're, we're delighting everyone who comes to the fair and that's given us a big happiness boost for free, uh, which is quite cool. Now, one of the other things I'm tempted to try is to maybe purchase a, a territory somewhere on a completely different area of the map and then start building in it uh, and see if that works because uh, I want to play with the mechanics. Now, that red circle is indicating that that's going to be an undesirable building. 
uh, so you don't want it sitting in your residential area so let's move it off to the right somewhere and get it built there we go okay so that's an ongoing construction now we also need a weaver's hut and a tailor's workshop uh, but it might be worth waiting to see what pathing is done by our villagers because one of the other things we're going to have to do is mass deforestation this whole area um, because the ground where we put the new wheat farm isn't actually technically fertile because it's a forest but once you cut the trees down it is uh, that was another happiness boost that we got by the way so you can see happiness is now at a hundred and five percent so our people are super duper happy uh, i've also had people mentioning uh, giving our serfs promotion to commoners uh, i will also do that in a future episode as well uh, so do not fear anything that you need to understand and operate this game i will be going over so don't worry about it so again you can see our nice little market area has been built our church is under construction again as i said we will need a another tax office let's get these additional people into our population so we're now at a population of 59 and as you can see we can now see pathing being built so what we want here is potentially another fisherman's hut uh, so let's get that rotated round and plop that next to the church there we go because that means that the fish from this place can just be taken straight to the market uh, which is a nice short location but we do also need to put in more storage closer to our new residential area so that for the market our first house is going in uh, so that for the market the food doesn't have to come from a really long long way away so we've now got a merry fair so trade price bonus of 10 percent and happiness bonus of 25 percent for all villagers with citizen commoner and serf status okay so we've got a new tale that can be heard and a courier requesting an audience uh, so we've got two uh, undone things at the moment so let's click on this person improving trade with northbury thanks to your increased trade a large number of folks are now looking to settle in northbury uh, yet the village struggles to feed the extra workforce okay you will have what you need so we only need to oh that's actually quite a challenging one let's ask the uh, elders for help because we don't have that much bread at the moment but we do have some uh, influence to use so there we go we are now flourishing so we've reached the flourishing tier which means we have a load more stuff that we can uh, look at now so again let's drop a pause on the now let's speed the game up actually i was going to say let's leave it paused but no we've got an auto save in progress so improving trades with northbury so we've now got plus 36 uh, per item so trade capacity has now been increased very good we've got a new tail that can be heard uh, as well uh, but that just disappeared so i didn't uh, look at that before it disappeared that's uh, just a word of advice there to pay attention to your notifications uh, again i did skip forwards though uh, so luxury market uh, you've also got tooling and beer production and then you have a goods market uh, in that we haven't unlocked yet in the existing tier before we unlocked flourishing right now i think it's probably time to build our tax office because the church is oh no it's not finished yet waiting for builder i reckon that's like 99 percent constructed uh, but it's nearly there all the materials is just short of one tool by the looks of it uh, but that should be constructed in the not too distant future and again we are waiting for our sheep farm to be built and on top of that, we will then need to build all of the associated buildings so that we can start making common clothing, so simple clothing. So that's working nicely. We can see we've got a couple of houses in our new residential district, and in fact, a third one that's under construction. Our sheep farm is being built, which is handy. <clears throat> and the fisherman's post there as well. Uh, we're waiting for that to be constructed. There we go administration and what we're going to do is we're going to put a tax office in just outside of our residential area 
Uh, so you don't want to overuse uh, your residential area. And again, there's a green benefit of it. Uh, the range is a bit bigger than that circle. The, the tax man will walk around and collect taxes. Uh, so all you want to do now for is design it. So I think let's give it, I don't know, where should we put that tower? Should we put the tower there? Yeah, that's not too bad. Uh, let's make it bigger because it looks a bit silly being up there behind. So let's put a door in. Let's put the point of meeting outside the front. Do we want any other additional splendor? Yeah, we could try a wall banner. Although to be fair, that doesn't look very good, does it? I think you might need a much bigger building before you start using things like banners. Although it's put it in, and you actually can't see it, which is interesting. It's like it's inside the building. Mm, let's move the whole building a little bit. There we go. And let's delete that, I think. Let me move you. There we go. And right click, you have vanished. That is it. I think we will build you now. Very good. Okay, and we can recruit two tax collectors. And that's what we want. We want two tax collectors. And again, in the next episode, we will uh, expand our existing tax office uh, back on the other side of our village. Uh, as well as a lot of other stuff so there is a lot to do in this game now bearing in mind we're following the labor pathway uh, rather than the clergy or military uh, reason for that is it's i feel it's kind of the most balanced thing but also you can choose later on uh, through edicts and benefits and everything else to then expel explore one of the other factions if you so choose Okay, right, so now we need to wait for that to be built. And here we go, we only have one tax collector here, see? So we have two in the other and only one here. We've also got a merchant who's requesting an audience. Uh, but our rustic church has just been finished. Nice. Now we just gotta wait for loads of other constructions to be finished and we will then put in our weaver. Uh, okay, wheat for the elders. Uh, let's have a look how much do they want and then we'll decide whether we can just tick that straight off. So what do you want? Uh, you need a hundred inside storage and we currently have zero. Okie dokie. Maybe we'll do this later. I think this is certainly an option as well. Uh, so you can go not interested, maybe next time. So the deal is off, but the estate will come back at a later point in time. You can discuss a better deal. Uh, by using five of your influence, but I'm going to say not interested for now, uh, purely because we have no wheat in storage at all, so to get the amount needed in the time required may not be possible. And obviously if you fail, uh, there are consequences. Now as I said, we need other storage uh, near our second market, so what we're going to do is we're going to put in a granary, and we will then allocate specific resources within that gran granary so it is close to our market. So we will put in there fish, bread, berries, and then going forwards any other resource uh, that is food based that we need to put in there. Okay, just have a quick look at our zoning again so we know where everything is. It's worth having it highlighted uh, just so you can remember. Aha, now it's time to spawn our sheep. Oh yes, they give you a spawn button. Let's give a shepherd. How many is that? Three, four, five. Come on, don't abuse. How can we not abuse it? Let's create 400 million sheep. Okay. <laughs> Please remove one. Let's keep removing sheep now. Does that disappear? That come on, don't abuse? No? Okay then. Well, we're going to click it a few more times. There we go. We've got some newcomers requesting an audience as well, so let's add them to our population. And let's not abuse that spawn button too much. I think we've got uh, about four or five sheep, I think. Uh, they don't need a pen. They literally just wander around. And now that the pathway is there, we can put in our weaver. So let's put in the weaver's hut there. And then our final building, our tailor's workshop. Again, we can see that the path goes along the uh, shoreline. Uh, so where's the entrance? There it is. Let's get that built as well. So that is all the associated be buildings. So the sheep farm, the weaver's hut, and the tailoring workshop. So that allows us to make clothes, to make wool, uh, and other resources. So all very good. We also want, as I said, another wheat farm. And we're gonna put that in again here, and we're gonna allocate all that territory to the right 
uh, as the field. Uh, but of course it needs deforestation first, but that is uh, something else that we'll get into a little bit later in the episode and into next episode, which will be episode five, because uh, it was a lot to cram in into this episode. But if you have been following along, this should give you a lot of expansion op options if you have been waiting for these episodes to drop. Um, I will try and get the uh, content um, more episodes like this where there is a lot of stuff going on and it gives you a lot of options uh, as you're going forwards uh, if you are following this uh, episode by episode to know what to do. Okay, so we can see our little sheep running around nicely. Uh, they are producing resources as well, uh, which is good. Our next two buildings are due to be constructed, of course. And we've got a villager path blocked. Okay, so we can see villager path blocked, but we do need a warehouse as well to store resources. Uh, that are being produced. So what we will do is we'll put the warehouse, I think, up near our sheep farm. Uh, maybe on the... Oh, we've reached the renowned tier of labor. Very, very good. So we've now got new content available to unlock. Uh, maybe there for the warehouse. Yeah, let's put it there. So directly behind the sheep farm. And again, as you can see, we've got a lot of forest here. Uh, let's get a fisherman assigned to that building as well because we do have the people to do it and let's skip forwards again okay so where i'm skipping forwards to now is where we've got these blocked villages okay so there could not reach destination could not reach lumber camp couldn't reach market bench so there's a lot of people that currently can't get to their destinations and i think one of the leading causes of that is probably this forest so what we want to do is we want to change the layout. So, okay, so let's change. So reforestation, uh, let's uh, minus off maybe the edge and across the outer edge where that other path is and then maybe delete the middle as well, uh, potentially. Uh, so let's uh, maybe get rid of the bit in the middle uh, so it will eventually allow a path through. There we go bit like that so there's only two very small areas of forestation there but we can add uh, the reforestation slightly further out maybe uh, let's fill in these little areas here and again maybe to there and to there so that's there we go so we've now got kind of two bars either side and again make sure that we are doing extraction in all of those areas as well and then what we're gonna to want to do is ensure that we get all of this extracted. Uh, so hopefully this will get all of this cut away. And what we will also do going forwards is we're gonna to need to deforest the whole new area that we're constructing. Uh, primarily uh, the farming area because we can't actually grow wheat because it's not open land. Uh, we've got a load more people joined us, so that's good. Okay. Again, going in, having a look. So carpenter's working fine. We've now marked uh, this for non-reforestation and hopefully the lumber camp now will actually start cutting away those trees. And we do have the same problem on this right-hand side where we've got a lot of forestation. We need to actually get people working in the buildings as well. So there we go, that fisherman is working nicely, the church is working, we've got our two tax collectors. Uh, let's close that window and then close all. There we go, zoom in a little bit and I will skip forwards one more time uh, before we get towards the end of this episode. But the weaver's hut is nearly constructed. And uh, that's it, come on, get it finished. Oh, really? Off the worker goes. Oh, we've got three more people incoming. And we've got our wheat farm, which is an ongoing construction. So they're cutting down all those trees. Slowly, mind you. Seeing as we are running at uh, triple speed, which is max speed, but still, it is what it is. It's uh, not the end of the world. And again, as new houses are built, uh, which I think I can see the framework for some house in there as well, is, uh, oh, no, we minus that there. We've left a little half moon crescent. Okay, so let's expand this deforestation. 
just ensuring that we are covering that whole area so it doesn't actually get deforested. There we go. And again, as I said, what we will be doing is painting over uh, later on uh, all this area as deforestation and we're going to build multiple lumber camps to do it but our weaver's hut now has employees and our farm is being constructed as is our warehouse so let's uh, skip forwards momentarily uh, just so a bit more is done before the end of the episode okay we've got those newcomers to uh, grant audiences with as well so let's get that done skip forward so the resources we want common clothes we want wool and we also potentially want cloth and let's think of another resource uh, what's really going to be likely to be there uh, i think that's more than likely going to be wood uh, or something else so let's just put wood because we do have well we will have a lumber camp nearby uh, so let's put wood as the fourth item. So that's now storage for everything that's going to come out of this part of the industry. So clothing, cloth and wool. Oh, we've got somebody there with a question mark. Bad weather is coming. A wise stargazer has come to the village predicting that bad weather is coming. Oh, fantastic. So we've got a bad weather event. Okay, well we do have quite a lot of food. Uh, so I don't think we have too much to worry about. We've got a lot of fish. Uh, we've got quite a lot of bread um, we've already got 12 common clothes as well but uh, we haven't unlocked the market goods stall yet so we're not actually selling them to anyone yet but let's put in another gathering hut uh, so we can uh, double up the amount of berries that we're getting because for all intensive purposes these little plots are infinite uh, in their resource generation so there is no limit uh, to how much comes out of those three little berry bushes uh, which I find quite amusing uh, but it works well for the game so it is what it is right so now we want to plant the uh, well paint the crop field for our wheat farm so we're going to do it quite large and we're going to take this whole area basically uh, that will probably be enough make it go right to the edge maybe now nah, that'll do now let's add some farmers and there we go Okay, now the next thing, of course, we're going to want to do is they can't plant the crop in the middle of a forest. I was hoping that they would chop down the trees. Clearly, they're not going to, which means we're going to need to give them a little bit of help. And for that, we're going to need a lumber camp. And that lumber camp, we will be building multiple lumber camps to get all of these trees cut down. So there we go. Lumber camp. Let's put it next to the farm. Doesn't really matter where. Maybe about there, maybe. There we go, and build. And those guys will literally start chopping down what we dictate. So let's dictate. So let's do a huge extraction zone. So let's just do everything of where the farmland is. Because once the trees have been chopped down, you will have fertile ground underneath, even though it doesn't currently look like it. So here you go, so fertility, as you can see, this is all deep green. So every time you have grass uncovered, it is deep green. And as you chop down the trees, that is all the same way. So anywhere where there is no forest, uh, the fertility is high. So if you chop down the trees, you have fertile ground to farm. Uh, so the logic is sound, as they say. But we are approaching the end of the episode, believe it or not. That half hour went by very, very quickly, but we have achieved enormous amounts in today's episode. Uh, you can see them now planting that tiny little area for wheat field uh, because there isn't much ground to actually plant it on. Uh, but the lumber camp doing its job uh, once it's constructed uh, to get those trees chopped down. Uh, and eventually over time, we will strip out all of the trees in this area in the residential area leaving some nice pockets of forest around for aesthetics uh, but other than that uh, we will also develop the area further of course in the next episode uh, so do come back for that i will link to my going medieval series um, at the end of this video uh, so it's a comparable game similar-ish in style but different enough uh, that they are both amazing games and you can have both uh, for the different experiences that each has uh, but down in the 
bottom right hand corner uh, you will be able to click on that Going Medieval series and in the bottom left hand corner if you're a Fallout fan uh, my top 10 tips for Fallout. If you're loving my content and it is helping you then please uh, do uh, subscribe to the channel and if uh, if you want boot that like button uh, both do help me out as a creator as i help you guys out as gamers so until next time all it leaves me to say of course is good morning good afternoon good evening and from me know it all gaming good night <laughs>